welcome to episode 99 of our Family Travel Australia series. After an amazing stay in Kings Canyon, this week we hit the road north, headed for Alice Springs. Paul gets some great advice around road safety, towing and gear tips, and we say farewell to our wonderful friends after a fantastic two weeks traveling the Red Center together. We enjoy some easy and great day trips from Alice, hiking and exploring the East and West McDonald Ranges, including some of Australia's oldest Aboriginal rock art. And we stop in at one of the most unlikely festivals you would expect to find in this part of the world. Then we set off on the next leg of our adventure towards Darwin, headed for Devil's Marbles. Be sure to subscribe and join us for all of the adventure. Look at us, eh? A final couple of days <laughs> together with my Taswegian mate, Adam. Okay, now, a, a quick backstory for Adam here. Adam is a station officer for the Hobart Fireys, right? Hobart, okay. yep, that's yep. it. Yeah, okay, so you're the main man down there. Mate, you really also look after the design and build of what has now become Australia's best fire trucks? Yep, absolutely. There you go. <laughs> so this guy knows a thing or two about vehicle safety and what's required to make sure that you're looking after your vehicle where you can to ensure the journey's going to get from A to B without too much drama. Absolutely. Um, the other thing is that you literally picked up your van, got your, your cruiser there, left Tassie, yep. drove straight up to the Cape. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> so I feel like you've done your fair share of towing on, on most surfaces. And then you've come all the way back down here, Medicine Central Australia. So I wanted to really talk to you before you left so that you could impart some of your knowledge, okay, yep. with everyone out there um, around the stuff that you think is absolutely imperative to safety. For absolutely. your family and, and towing. And then, um, yeah, some of the kit that you absolutely love. Yep, absolutely. Right. No right. worries at all. Right, hey, Paul, let's start with some tyres. The other things that are going to keep your family safe on the road. A lot of the times we'll go and buy our car and our caravan, set the tyre pressures, and away we go for 20,000 k's. That's not ideal. Okay, mm. we need to raise and lower our tyre pressures as and when required, depending on the road surface that we're travelling on. Yep. And that's really important for the safety of your car and also your family. Yeah. Mate, you've got a system that I, I think obviously came through the fires. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fireys, and that was the four C's. Tell us about that. Absolutely, so the four C's are check your tires when they're cold, make sure your caps are in good working condition and they're not cracked and you're not allowing dust into your valves. Uh, the contents of your uh, tires are spot on all the time. Okay, it's really important that your tyre pressures are spot on. Mm -hmm. uh, so whether it be 42, we run 42 pound on the road and 26 on the unsealed road. Is that all around? That's for the... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you've got a ute or a, um, a truck, then the rear of the ute, uh, you might want to run a couple of pound heavier or a couple of pound more in the rear. Uh, but as a, as a general rule, uh, 42 pound all around for me. Great. Um, and then the condition of your vehicle tyres, okay? Um, so if we can just come over here, Paul, You'll see the condition of the tyres across the tread, okay, so, um, and if we, you can have a look and see how it's wearing all the way across the tread there. And so, mate, I mean, obviously, if you're a weekend warrior, then you, you think you should be doing these checks every time? Every time you go, come out of the driveway. If you're only yeah. going away for a weekend, the van probably sits around for three or four months in your driveway. No one checks your tyres for you. No one checks the pressures. Um, and it's a must you do that before you head off on your weekend. Hey, something you did with us back there at Curtin Springs was go around and actually tighten up the nuts. Now, Absolutely. I've never done that, yep. or, or can I say I've seen anyone doing that. Um, it did surprise me yep. that they actually did have a quarter turn in some of them. Absolutely. They will come loose. When you're driving along on your corrugations, everything's shaking, everything's moving, and your wheel nuts will come loose on the roads. Yeah. Um, the other thing I love, mate, is that you're running a... TPMS, tyre pressure monitoring system, something that we are looking into, but um, yeah, tell us about your experience there. Yeah, absolutely, particularly when you're on unsealed roads. Uh, if you do get a uh, tyre deflate, then it will delaminate when you're driving along. A lot of the times when it delaminates, it will blow the next tyre or the tyre in front of the tyre at the rear, particularly on dual tandem trailers. So mm. it's really important that you get on top of that straight away. As soon as you get that leak, it sends off an alarm inside the vehicle and you can pull up and change that tyre immediately. Do you know, we left Earl Dunder, yep. I think there, just, I mean, we're out, out here in Central Australia, and we saw an, an older bloke, he was by himself, 
and that's exactly what happened. Yep. He, we just saw him at the servo. He went around, checked his tyres. He yep. did a walk around. Yep. And he got literally up the road and the tyre completely... Delaminated. Yeah, it was, I've never absolutely. seen that. Yep, absolutely. So it does happen, you yeah. know. My word, and when they do delaminate, they've got sharp um, wire and all the rest inside mm. the tyre compound and that will blow the, neck, the other tyre on that side of the vehicle. Okay. Here comes Daddy. Hey. Hey. Okay. Oh, all good. Okay. Yeah, poor bugger. He, um, he's travelling by himself. His tyre, he just literally, what are we? 20 minutes down the road from that last roadhouse, so we just got fuel. He said he checked his tyre, so he doesn't know if it was, you know, cold, hot. He's, he's really not sure we, even that he hit anything, but it has literally just exploded. Mm. And he said, but, you know, he's not towing a, a very big van. He's, he's only, um, he said he's only sitting on 90. How easy it can happen, though. Yep. But he's fine. He, he already had it half jacked up and he had a spare and... Awesome. He was just very thankful that someone at least stopped, stopped and to check on as we know we've had people stop for us when yep. we've blown out a tire It's good to check if it's safe anyway if it's safe to pull over and you're not going to put yourself in risk or or anyone else But anyway, he's he's fine. Good. good All right. news. Here we go on the road again We'll give these cars a couple of cars coming a bit of a go hey. To get past us Let's move to some gear. I'm, yeah. I've been uh, eyeing off, I've got gear envy. <laughs> Show us the mirrors, mate. Absolutely. So these are the new MSA mirrors um, that have just come out uh, into the Australian market. Uh, they are purposely designed for the 200 series, but they are uh, designed and developed for other vehicles now as well. So basically you can have them and they look fairly um, OEM or fairly standard when they're in the, in the sitting position like that, or you can bring them out here. So when I'm towing my boat at home, I use them just the one notch out, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's not that wide, it's not as wide as my van, um, and I still don't have those big mirrors hanging off the side. Yeah. But when I'm towing with the van, I just pull it over here like so, and they, they comes all the way out the side of the van. How clever is They're that design? Awesome. They're absolutely awesome. They've also got an indicator okay. on the side of the mirror here, and they are fully adjustable from the uh, OEM controls. So. so if you wanted in that position, you could still push that on in? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yep, cool. Absolutely, you can, do, really you can do pretty much whatever you wish. And they come in full, you can go out through there like that if you wish as well, so. Okay, a little bit of a spoiler alert. Katie and I uh, <laughs> eyed these off. We're gonna get some of these installed in Darwin and along with some other storage solutions that MSA absolutely nail. Yep. You were saying these guys do a five-year warranty on these? Yeah, five-year warranty on all their products of, of their mirrors. Yeah. How can you beat that? All right, um, Romper Stomper, as I like to call it. <laughs> Stone Stomper, Paul. Oh, yeah, Stone Stomper, that's, yep. That's the one. The Australian-built product. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. The, the Aussies giving it a go and, and making something yeah, better. Absolutely. Know? So these are an Australian-built, designed and developed product. Mm. Uh, they're built in South Australia. Okay, so uh, the, all you do is you send them away, send your measurements away to them. They come back with the design and dimensions and then they build it for you. And I must say that they are so easy to work with. Um, and you can see by here, like we've done over 10,000 Ks now on unsealed roads. And you can see from sort of here down, there are no, there, there's no road, stone chips or damage to the vehicle at all, to the front of the van. Well, there's and, a uh, bit of a wine, empty wine glass. Yes, mate. well, that happens. Already been on the vino. <laughs> It's late in the afternoon up here, Paul, very warm for a Tasmanian. So, <laughs> um, so I'll get Paul to overlay, we we'll do a hook up to the vehicle and you can see it then. Okay, the final one that is another one on our list now to get is Absolutely. Savvy Level. Tell us about that. Absolutely. So the Savvy Level is what I call the marriage saver. Okay, it's, uh, there is no stress, there is no drama when you pull up at a caravan park or a an outback camp like this, you can find and make sure that you, your van is completely level as soon as you pull up. And you do it all from your mobile phone. Yeah. Okay, so this app here that we've got, um, that will tell you exactly how the van's sitting. Okay, and basically the way it works is it runs through this little box here on the drawbar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that little box there on the drawbar then sends a Bluetooth signal back to your phone and you can tell whether the, vehicle, the caravan is too far to the left, too far to the right, front and rear. Absolutely brilliant. And Love has it. saved so many arguments in the caravan <laughs> park. It is unreal. Excellent, mate. All right, so then just a final bit of advice. Something that I've loved over this last couple of weeks of traveling with you is 
You've got a system for everything. Yep. And that's probably the fiery coming out in you, I guess. You Absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's almost a case of prevention is, is, is better than the problem, isn't my it? My word, my word. So everything that we do in our emergency service life, um, we have a system and so everything's systematic. Okay, so th this is no different for me. I do exactly the same thing when I hook up. Um, every single time, so there's a step. I don't miss any steps along the way. Mm. Uh, it's exactly the same as when I, I'm ready to tow. Everything is locked down the same way. I do a full circle of the vehicle and the, the van before I proceed onto the road. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Well, mate, we are going to miss you. <laughs> Absolutely. Even YouTube's going to miss you, believe it or not. <laughs> but you'll be, look, you're in perpetuity now. People Absolutely. can rewind this part yeah, if they want to no, see your they will. head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get that glass of wine. Get Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> One more tip that I just remembered about before you <laughs> get into the vino is the UHF radios. Absolutely. We're both running pretty well the same kit. Tell us yep. about that. Yeah, so again, it, it is a safety feature of towing vans, I think. Uh, Channel 40 is a must to be on the road. Okay, you've got to know when there's a truck coming. You've got to know when there's other uh, vehicle users on the road. And you've got to be able to communicate with them. And it's really important that you use your great MSA mirrors to see the truck coming, but then you've got to try and get a communication line with them. Call them up on 40, um, tell them who you are, what vehicle you're in, and then get a communication line going. And if they want to come around, they'll tell you, yep, I'm going to come around, and that will give you a preemptive warning that they're coming around. Mm. I, see, I see in a lot of vans, um, UHF 18-40. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's really because most caravanners, if they're communicating in their convoy or with each other, are on 18. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Except, so channel 18 for caravan to caravan, uh, but all the big trucks that are on the road are on channel 40. I think something else we noticed is it's not a chat line. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's really remembering that it's, it's there for its purpose of exactly that safety and, and keeping everyone, you know, able, able to uh, get around safely. Yeah, absolutely. And and like all the travel that we've done, we've done over 20,000 k's in the last four months and the, the truck drivers have been fantastic. As soon as you get that communication line mm -hmm. working, they'll say, yeah, mate, I'm, I haven't got another gear. I'm, I'm struggling to get you on this hill. Uh, and then you, you can go from there. Okay. Something else that we noticed, I haven't seen it in Northern Territory um, and I didn't see this in Outback New South Wales, but in Outback Queensland, um, there's certainly a rule there that states that you have to have a 200 metre distance between you and another van whether you know them or not um for that road trains i mean they're 54 Absolutely. meters 54 meters in length yeah. like, and they'll take they'll take a good couple of hundred meters to come around you but ensure you've got that good communication line so he knows when he can come back in he's struggling to see 50 meters behind him from the cab and if you can say look mate you're right to come back in now it just makes his life that much easier and on his way he goes fantastic um and the other thing then, do you ever change your driving line or is it is it just steady? Absolutely. So what I'll do is I'll, as soon as I've got communication with the truck and I know that um, the truck's going to come around me, then I'll say to him, when you come alongside and you're out on the other side of the road, I'll start to back off. Okay, and that'll shorten his distance of overtaking up. So he'll come out, I'll back off and he'll come back in front of me um, without any drama at all. Yeah, cool. What I love is when you get that little bit of acknowledgement from yep. the blinkers. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, the old left, right, left. <laughs> yeah. We always say thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's good. One last thing on UHFs, Paul. Um, when you're backing into a campground, uh, try and get your partner or um, your son, daughter, or whoever out with a with a handheld UHF. It makes life so much or so much easier uh, when you're backing in. You've got someone there to guide you in. Um, and mm. say, yep, keep coming, five metres, four metres, right, I stop there. Um, and it just makes life a lot easier and a lot safer for particularly young children running around yeah. um, campgrounds like we do. Yeah, it's have. like the, the eyes in the back of your head that, you, you know, you always wish you had and it's a, Absolutely. a, a big part of it. Um, another thing that I want to mention, they're five watt um, radios yep. that we're using. We bought some little Uniden um, two watt Yep, ones, absolutely, yeah. And that's really for Jasper. And you know, with he's with Kate or me, and we're we're down at the park, or yeah, cool. It's a really yep. great way for us to communicate back to the van with Katie, say she's Absolutely. cooking up a storm, and yep, and we're out and about, and he loves it. And it's it is nothing better than getting your kids involved. My just word. you know, we get onto channel twelve or yep. something that's yep. not a you know, a, 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 just a chatter channel. Yeah, yep. and um, and that's how we use it as well. So Absolutely. Yep. Cool. All right. Awesome. Done. Let's have a drink. Woo! <laughs>
Good morning. Okay, we have just left Kings Creek Station out there at Kings Canyon. Gee, we had some fun out there. Oh, amazing. It is absolutely a spectacular hike, that rim walk, and yeah, do it. Put it on your list. For sure. Okay, today's a, a little bit of a mixed emotions day, to be honest. We are saying goodbye to our family, the Merediths from Tassie, as they make their way across borders and we make our way north back towards Alice Springs. Mm -hmm. But we've had an amazing time. Oh, we? it's been so good. So awesome to share, yeah. like really iconic experiences too, like Uluru and Kings Canyon, and to be able to do that together, tick those off our bucket list together. So good. Pretty special. And you know, it's interesting, the flip side of the coin for the, the COVID lockdown really has meant that we doubled our time instead yes. of a, a week yes. of uh, fun we've been able to spend two weeks and been able to still explore and do what we wanted just in this one little corner of northern territory so so good it's a bit of a, a silver lining what was yes. your favorite bit jasper my favorite bit was actually digging that hole with giant our massive fingers yeah. oh my gosh playing in that red dirt did you love it yeah. love the red dirt Red dirt everywhere. You can take the boy out of <laughs> Central Australia, but you can't take the Central Australia out of the boy. That is so true. I think Jasper's beautiful, baby soft white skin has been permanently stained red from Central <laughs> you can see Australia. His tinge of red. Uh, it was an awesome time together. We're going to be driving about 430 or thereabouts uh, kilometres today yeah. to Alice. Uh, we'll say goodbye to these guys at Eldunda and they'll head down to the uh, South Australian Northern Territory border there at Colgara. And uh, yeah, so quite a few kilometres. We've got quite a bit of traffic in front of us. It's a caravan of caravans, isn't it? It is. But that's yes. all right. You know, we're, we're happy to take it nice and slow. Here we go. Let's do it. Bye. 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 Free Pancake Sunday here in the Alice. Woohoo! How good is that? What else is going to happen? Well, I've catched up with some of my friends mm. that I'm going to see here. Yes. Playground! Oh, there's a playground over there. We'll check that out as well. Yeah. All right, and we've got some friends over there. So we'll go and say hi to them. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Where's Mama? Mom. Got our plates? All right. Let's fill our bellies with pancakes. Yeah. There's nothing better than pancakes, especially when they're free, right? Yeah, free <laughs> Sunday pancakes. There's a massive line. Oh, there's line. a massive line. Look at that. That's all right. Hopefully there's enough. Yeah. Jasper Rooney. How are you this morning, mate? Uh, oh, sorry, I'm gonna get rid of that. Put that in wait for yeah, I better wait for mum. Seeing that she is the bus lady. Uh, just uh, look like 
What are you talking about? This is my new hat, mate. It's actually, it's, I got this hat in Tibbaburra, and um, it's my hiking hat. Cowboy assistant, I got a radio handed out from Dad. A cowboy assistant, well there you go. Okay, family, beautiful, beautiful day here in the Alice, Alice. Beautiful day in Alice and uh, it's 12 degrees. This is the warmest temperature we have had at 9.30 yeah. today. Yes, and it's going to, I believe, get up to 20. Let's just have a really quick look. The temperature has been zero degrees Celsius, 19. hasn't it? But it's been um, colder than that. Really? Yeah, Adam said it was minus something. Oh, look, once you're getting down that area, it's... Uh, Doesn't matter what it is, it's... It's bloody cold. freezing. Okay, Jasper, we are going on a bit of an adventure. We're going to go to the East McDonnell Ranges and... Uh, this isn't actually part of the national parks. The western part of the McDonald Ranges is. Mm. So we thought we'd do that uh, on our return visit. Yes. Um, but today we're going to head out to the east. There's um, some beautiful uh, Aboriginal rock art that's yes. thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. Uh, there's uh, the, ta how do you say it? Gorge? Mm, Triff. Trophina, Trif Trophina Gorge, uh, and some neighbours just over there who have two uh, young girls, Sophie and Hannah, are going to join us as well, aren't they? Oh, yeah, Hannah and yeah. Sophie, and uh, we've got our, our UHF radios ready to go, haven't we, Jasper? So we can. Copy over. Do you read me? Copy over, Hannah. Do you read me? It's not very. It's not really on. It's not on yet. That's just a practice, right? Yeah. All right, well, let's do it, family. Okay. Okay, here we go. McDonald Ranges. Fantastic. Talk about the best part of travel is when you actually get to get out into nature in places as remote as this and discover incredible history and learn. We all learn something and it's free. Unbelievable. How are you going back there, my big explorer? I'm coming up. Okay, you lead the way.
Good morning! Okay, this is uh, a pretty awesome day ahead of us. We're actually uh, already been in and had our haircuts. What do you think, Jasper yeah. and I? Mm -hmm. It's taking Spunky years monkeys. off Jasper, hasn't it? Look at him. <laughs> he looks so great. Oh, you actually look grown up, yeah. Um, so that was a bit of fun. Uh, Alice Springs, we are yet to really explore uh, the central kind of region, but we have been out and about. We love the East McDonnell Ranges. That was oh, great. Yeah, stunning. And so today we thought that we would actually go out to the West McDonnell Ranges, which is the main national park around there, and check that out. Mm. We'll just let these kids get out of their four-wheel drive. Hey, guys. Uh, before we do, we're just about to leave the big four where we're staying. Look, it's actually a, a massive park and has everything you'd expect of the big four, really. Mm. Oh, yeah, it does. It's actually, it's a huge park. I think there's mm. about 400 sites Easily. here between the powered and the unpowered sites. There's a massive amount of ensuite sites as well. Mm -hmm. They've got villas and also different style cabins on site. Um, typical of a big four, they have all the entertainment what's for your, the kids. What's your favourite part so far, Jasper? Oh, my favourite part <laughs> was actually getting to see jumping pillow bouncing on that bounciness <laughs> and the pool oh yeah so yes. that's right yeah great jumping pillow great pool with a water slide yep. um you know you can hire pedal cars you can even hire uh bikes here at this park mm -hmm. as well and then they've got things that we haven't really seen before they've got fuel here um you know they've got the air for you to check your tires you can obviously swap and go your gas as well mm -hmm. a pretty huge gift store with all your northern mm. territory uh mementos and souvenirs uh the food truck scene is oh, yes. pretty good we had indian the other night and that was very good we can vouch for that they do have strawberry sous which is a strawberry crepe dessert van not sure that's what it's called but anyway oh, okay. it's I'll strawberry like something do you want to try that later jasper <laughs> oh sure <laughs> of course they actually open i think every night i think you're right jasper they are open every night how do you know these things <laughs> when it comes to dessert jasper's a listening we have his full attention there you go it's called strawberries galore mm -hmm. open nightly awesome from six till nine hey something else uh, dessertish that they do here which again is a first we haven't seen this anywhere else every sunday morning free pancakes how good is that and it, it actually makes you feel better about the price for staying here, to be honest. Well, yes, that's true. Yeah, the uh, the pancakes they are absolutely famous for. Oh my God, and they were huge too. Our plates weren't big enough for the pancakes. I only took our small plates over. Um, and there was a massive lineup, but gee, they got through everybody oh, yeah. super quick. They've obviously got a well-polished machine when it comes to serving up their free brekkie pancakes every single sunday morning so not just school holidays every sunday morning yep. and they have um the pancake eating records up on the wall which is a bit frightening actually what people can consume look there's obviously the uh, the men and women's title holders uh which i thought was pretty funny because they have actually been updated with someone's own label maker because they they want it to be recognized obviously i love it um not just by their girth well they were massive i mean one yeah. pancake was enough and anyway um so how cool is that free pancakes on a sunday we loved doing that um so all in all the park has been like excellent mm -hmm. um i have to say the sites particularly on the side that we are on mm. um, um a really big really generous site so you certainly yeah. don't feel squished in to a caravan park at all there's plenty of space the only thing that we will say and there are signs everywhere and even when you check in it says lock your van lock mm. up your valuables two rows over yeah. uh, an older couple just popped literally across the lane to hang out their clothes and had two wallets and their mobile phone stolen yeah. from inside their van because yeah. they hadn't locked it and look to be fair it can happen anywhere sure we you know we had that advice so early on our very first mm. caravan park you know brand new on the road and peter at rivershore resort said to us 
just lock your van, doesn't matter yeah. where you're going, how quick you're gonna be, lock your van. We've always done that, we've never had an issue. Look, there is a reason though why they are telling you everywhere you look there's signage, even in the bathrooms, have you locked up your valuables? There's a reason for it. So yeah, uh, yeah unfortunately a little bit of theft in the uh, the Alice and this is at every park, yeah. so we are told. Yeah. All right, besides that, fantastic, love it. Yeah, it's been yeah. Really, a really great base for us to spend a few days to get out and explore the ranges and also to just have a few days to regroup and try and get some of that red dirt. Clean. Oh my God, Jeez. out of the van, it's everywhere. All right, let's try and get ourselves some lunch out here too, um, out in the Western Max. Here we go. You hungry, Hi. Jasper? <laughs> Are you hungry? Yeah, no, he just wants that strawberry dessert crepe tonight. All right. Bye. Chasm. Wow. Mm, so beautiful. And it's such a family friendly landmark to be able to do a short walk and come out into this yeah. incredible environment. Okay, it's located only about 41 kilometres outside of the centre of Alice Springs. Mm -hmm. It was $12 each for Katie and I. It was $1 for Jasper. There are family tickets and concession tickets. I think a family's two adults, two kids, $30. It is money very well spent for yes. this incredible experience yes and similar to the king's canyon creek walk very well maintained and mm. almost manicured as you said paul such a beautiful walk that then ends up here do you know why else i think it's great value because it only took 2.2 billion years <laughs> to actually create this incredible landscape. Mm -hmm. it, it is an amazing place to actually come and sit, be quiet and take in the beauty of the Northern Territory. Mm. Okay, after having that unfortunate stone chip when we were following Adam there out at Kings Canyon the other day, we're on our way into Alice Springs and we saw a pretty large billboard that said WB Mobile Windscreens and Tinting. And so we took down their number. They said, look, just drop the vehicle around 
about 25 minutes they've been able to fill that stone chip with some resin or two types of resin as Jamie just told me and it was $98 so I can't complain about that it certainly does save getting the windscreen completely replaced Robin and the team here they are the people to see if you've got a problem when you're out in Central Australia with your windscreen they were fast friendly and all in all really great service and we are thankful that we've got our windscreen fixed before we start to make our way up to Darwin. Good morning everyone! Good, good morning. morning indeed Jasper Rooney. We are saying goodbye to Alice Springs and it has been a really fantastic time here. Oh yes and hasn't the weather been so good it's warmed up so much it's 19 degrees. Do you know I have to say where, where are we heading today Jasper? Yes, that's right. Yes. I love when uh, I said, okay, can you please just put it into the GPS and it says drive straight for 404 kilometers. Pretty much. <laughs> Don't get off this highway. I guess we can turn that off, right? I love it. Um, there is a place called Barrow Creek that we might stop, uh, which we've heard great things about, depending on how we're feeling, because it's still a decent amount of kilometers, that's for sure, mm. on one straight road. But look, there's a couple of things that we also wanted to shout out about our time here in the Alice. And one was getting to go to the Beanie Festival, which is probably the least likely thing you would expect to find in the middle of a desert, in the middle of the hottest country on earth. Yes, however, this festival, it's been running for 25 years. And I think it started just by a group of friends getting together. And as all good festivals do, it just grew into... And telling a yarn. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you did there. Anyway, people from all around Australia knit beanies and send them in. Over 6,000 beanies at the festival. It's hard to believe until you actually go to this festival and you see them all. It was fun going in and, and having a look at them all and trying some on and Jasper scored a really good beanie while we were there. We wouldn't have even known about this beanie festival had we not camped next to... Sean. Yes, the yes. ladies at Colgera Roadhouse who were coming up here specifically for that. Anyways, um, lots of fun. A good tip if you are in Alice when the beanie festival is on, it runs over four days, go on the first day if you are in the yeah, market for a beanie. Go yeah. on the first day. <laughs> and that's because our neighbours at the Big Four, their kids came back with amazing beanies. Yes. But they had gone on the first day. So yeah. obviously, first in, best dressed. Yeah, but they have this competition Head, with lots of different categories. Some of the artworks, I mean, they are artworks, were just incredible, weren't they? Particularly uh, in the, the winners across all of the different categories. Look, it is a very unique uh, festival to find out Amazing. here, but I tell you what, it does get zero degree temperatures. It's absolutely frozen. Yeah, it was so freezing. Probably yeah. is a good place for a beanie. Okay, the other thing is to check out the John Flynn gravesite. It is really a, a beautiful memorial to the Reverend John Flynn. You can find him on a $20 bill. He's the guy that created the Royal Flying Doctor Service and we got to see and learn a lot about him in Broken Hill mm. at their Royal Flying Doctor Service Centre. There is also an experience that you can do here in the Alice uh, that is also just as good we're told so worth checking out. Something actually that is a little bit of a segue to Devil's Marbles is that when they originally put his gravesite in there they wanted to recognise the work he'd done for Inland Australia through his missions and helping people and helping them to get services and aid and, and obviously the Royal Flying Doctors uh, when people needed it into these remote areas. And so they decided to get a massive boulder to, uh, I guess, represent the people of the land and how much he'd helped them. So they got this massive, I mean, like a cocoon size egg um, of a rock and they brought it down from Devil's Marbles. Well, for 20 years, the people of Devil's Marbles said, hey, this is a sacred site for women and it's it's a sacred stone. You need to return it. Wow. So eventually, after a bit of peacekeeping and uh, 20 years of back and forth, they did. They returned that stone and they've replaced it with another one from the local area. 
Anyway, just an interesting story and a really beautiful tribute to his life and his work and worth stopping. And you can see that as you're heading out to the West McDonnell Ranges. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. just on the outskirts of town. All right, I think that's it for us. We are on our way to Devil's Marbles. It is going to be a beautiful driving day. Let's get the tunes cranked, Jesper. Bye. What do you want us to play? I don't know. Oh, come on, mate. You've got a pretty good request list normally. What do you think we should play? I don't know. Ah, all right, how about some Elton John? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com.au. There you'll find loads of free resources our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails. A land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons. I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror.
the wide brown land for me. My country, Australia, written by Dorothea McKellar. Well done. Good job. Okay, how's this for luck? We uh, we saw a sign on the way into the Alice for WB window tinting and glass repair, particularly windscreens. Okay, how is this for good luck? We were on our way into the Alice after chipping our windscreen there back at Kings Canyon with Adam, and we saw a sign that said WB mobile window. How's this for a bit of a change of luck? We're driving into the Alice and we saw a big sign that said WB windscreens and tinting. We do mobile. So, okay, here we are at Stanley Chasm. Chasm. Chasm? Chasm, I think. Chasm with a silent H. Let's try that again. Stanley Chasm. Jasper, the pancakes are bigger than your head. What? Oh no, yeah. are our plates going to be big enough? Your plates aren't big enough. That's all right. Jasper? Yes. I want to teach you something. This is very cool. Something that I'm learning as well. Okay, cycads. Are plants, dental, food. Correct. Their ancestors are 200 million years ago, were the wow. dominant plant on planet Earth. Did you know that the Jurassic era of the dinosaur is also known as the age of the cycad. No, I didn't know that either. Or did you know that? You probably uh, did no. know that. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Another episode of Jasper Runs Around Australia. Yeah, these, um, these trees give birth to koalas. You can see this one's about to put his little foot out. Yeah, it's called a uh, koala birthing tree. Mm. Mm. I'm right, Dad. Right, oh, then lead the way. Come on, we have to cross this riverbed. That's the only way to get there. Imagine water coming through this. Imagine. Yeah, I can. I it would be a really, really beautiful swimming area, wouldn't hey. it? This is going to be the absolutely hard part, Mum. Okay, Papa. You're doing great. Maybe we need to hold your sunnies for you next time. Do you reckon it's safe enough for us to come up? Yep. Righto. Just be careful, Mum. There you go. Mm-hmm. Wait there, mate. See, Mum. Good boy. It was hard. Do you want me to hold your sunnies? Dad, that was hard, wasn't it? Yeah.